Hello everyone, welcome to our 100% accurate historical representation of the events that occurred in the United States of America in the late 1900s, all leading up to the publishing of the book How the Other Half Lives by Jacob Rees. This book was published and sold by the thousands, bringing light to the issues faced by the immigrants living in the slums of New York. However, before all of this could happen, they actually had to get into the country. Many of them arrived at and through Ellis Island. Next up. Alan. No, I'm trying to get into America. Well, that's funny because you're not getting into America. Why not? Well, what do you mean by that? No, I'm just playing with you. You can get it. Hi, right, Rock. Hi, Rock. 22 years old, black. Uh huh? Why do you want to get into America? Yo, let me tell you real quick. I need money. I need money for my family, man. Back home, we were struggling. I need money. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from, from Jamaica, man. What you think? You what you know? I mean, blacks only traveled here from the slave trade to... I ain't no about? slave. I ain't no slave? I ain't no slave. Were you, uh, ex-slave? No. No? I mean... Born and raised. Right. I think I'm gonna allow you into our country. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Hey. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Uh, Next up. Yes, sir. Jason Alex Alright. Alright. Says he wants to get in the country. Huh? He says he wants to get into the country. Uh, why do you want to get to the country? Who you may go? He says he wants money and a life. Uh, he, says, he has nothing where he comes from. No, no, no. Who you are? Who you are? Who you are? He says he wants to work as a drug dealer. <laughs> You're not getting into the country, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> In the late 19th century, cities were on the rise. The main contributor to this growth was the rapid influx of new immigrants entering the country. From 1860 to 1920, 28 million immigrants arrived in America. Although these immigrants came from all over the world, the largest group came from Europe. However, unlike in earlier immigrants in American history, over half of European immigrants in the late 19th century came from Eastern and Southern Europe and incorporated groups such as Italians, Greeks, Slavs, Russian Jews, and more. Previously, these groups had only made up 2% of all European immigrants. Most of these new immigrants, especially the ones from these regions, were poor and thus settled and took industrial jobs in the already overpopulated cities. Yes, I'm going to pull us. Friend? 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 What do you look for you guys? Cold. Really cold. How much you got? It's Friend. 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 Give me a rough guess. Pretty slow, pretty slow. Thank you, thank you! Ah, yes! 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 <laughs> now we introduce to you the big man himself, the guy in the suit, the one in the title of the movie. We will meet Jacob Reese and his brother and trusty assistant, Devin Reese, as they discuss their utter failures in life. It's not working, Devin. Nobody will know how awful these tenements are they aren't reading our magazines we have to find another way to get the word we out we have to figure out something else people are dying Devin a camera? the camera Devin no, not the camera Devin wait wait we're gonna we're be vloggers. vloggers oh my gosh Devin this is incredible Josh let's do this we right have now. to go and film we have to go take pictures we're gonna take pictures of the tenements in action yes. right, let's go Devin let's go How's it going, ladies and gents? Famous historian Howard Dean here to talk about Jacob Reese. Jacob Reese, a Danish immigrant, came to America at the age of 21. He had little money and quickly found the same hardships as many other immigrants at the time. Homelessness, hunger, and a lack of work. 
After some years, though, he was lucky enough to find a job as a police reporter for the New York Tribune. He began to research the slums in New York until he eventually decided that he had to share what he had seen. However, his magazines flopped, and there was no way to take pictures. Then, magnesium flash powder was invented, allowing him to start taking pictures of the dismal slums and tenements in which other poor immigrants lived. He was finally able to share what he had seen with the world. Hey guys, guys. Jacob Reese and Devin Reese What's in up? the house, or should I say, in the tenements. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna be touring you around the neighborhoods of New York, showing you all of the inequalities that this area has to offer with our trusty camera showing you taking pictures showing you showing the world these problems one photo at a time one photo at a time guys what he said as the dynamic duo kicked off their vlogging career they decided to interview a tenement owner and some of his tenants to get the real picture of their thoughts on the tenements so gabe i've heard that you're a tenement owner correct Yes. So, how do you feel about the treacherous, awful, dismal conditions in which you keep the, your very tenants? I mean, it works for me because I save more money, and uh, it's a hard life out here in New York. I need more money, you don't know what I mean. Don't you feel like an awful person? I don't you hate all. yourself? I hate all the immigrants. <laughs> Alright guys, you heard it from him. This is, this is the people that are housing our immigrants. This is the problem with New York. And this is what we need to fix. Thank you, Gabriel. You're welcome. As the pristine pair went to interview a group of immigrants, however, they came across an unexpected scene, a boxing match. Common among the poor of the area was underway. I want to see clean, fair match. Three, two, one, begin. Do it, Ashley. Guys, behave, please. <laughs> oh, no. Enough! I want to interview you. We are immigrant gang. Um, I don't know what that was, but I got an Our introduction! I got some questions for you, okay? Look at me. So, we're taking pictures of the tenements around here to try to expose the inequalities in the situations in which you live. So what's your, what's your thoughts on the tenements? Man, I came all the way from Jamaica. I had to leave my family, my friends, my job! For everything you here! And what you want to do is take pictures of me in your rich outfit? I'm done! I'm just trying to help, bro! Maybe that guy's right, bro. Maybe this yeah. guy's right. Yeah! Done. The vloggers soon realized that these interviews, although great for their stories, were too risky to keep filming. So the bullheaded brothers decided to stick with what they knew worked best. Photos of the tenements using their new magnesium flash powder technology. Devin, this is one of the tenements I'm talking about. These dismal conditions. And it's all people like him. All of his fault. And to show the world to this, we're gonna take pictures. Alright Devin, so that's what I'm talking about. Those are the pictures that we need. That's gonna make us a success and show the world. Whoa, whoa, okay. Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my 
<laughs> okay, Devin, I think this vlogging thing was a good idea. We got real footage of how these immigrants are in these terrible conditions. I mean, look at this. We just need to... Now, we just need to find a way to present this to the world. How are we going to do that? Oh, do you have any ideas? Lantern shows. Devin, you're a genius. Yes! With their photos in the bag, the Transcendent team went off to present their hard work in a magic lantern show where it could be seen on a large scale. I'm Jacob Reese, and this is Devin Reese. First of all, before I begin this presentation on how the other half lives, I would like to graciously thank Mr. Allo for providing us this presentation hall, if you will. So this is a tenement. It's very dirty and, and it's very unsafe to live in. Absolutely disgusting. We've got some more crowded oh, building. It's such a small, disgusting, dirty place. Dirt everywhere. There's only people crowded. How would you even go to the bathroom? My God. So this is a room that we found when I went upstairs into the building, into one of them, into the hall. There's a child standing in a puddle of filth. That poor child. Where's his mom? That's what I'm saying. She has to be working in terrible conditions. Mm -hmm. Now this is more more immigrants in their poor housing. More children with just no hope for the future. <laughs> now another picture of crowded crowded tenements. Oh, wow. So small. You can't believe they live like this. Even it's more dirt. Breathe. So small, man. How do they breathe? <laughs> We got some. What is this? Garbage? How are you supposed to live next to garbage? That's garbage cups. can. Or can? It's not a garbage floor. And finally, whatever this is. <laughs> Thank you. And that is all the photos that we have for today. Wow. Uh, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this. My name is Quan Cornelius, Cornelius the Third removed. And I really, <laughs> I really moved me with these pictures. I'm a publisher and I want to publish these photos in a book. It'll be called The Other Half. Please take my word and I'll publish these pictures. <laughs> I would love to have you publish this. Thank you. And I really think this is a great way to get these tragedies out to the world. Thank you for offering. <laughs> In his book, How the Other Half Lives, Jacob Reese exposed the horrific conditions of the tenements in which many New York City immigrants lived. Thanks to his book, and especially the heart-wrenching photos that it contained, people all around the nation saw how terrible conditions were for this often ignored group of people. Not only was the group ignored, but their health was too. Sanitation was so poor in these tenements that diseases like cholera and tuberculosis were absolutely rampant. Almost one in every five infants died living in these conditions. It wasn't just poor sanitation that killed them, and landlords ignored safety in other ways too. Often, when they were told their buildings were burning down with people inside of them, they would just say, let them cook. After receiving the astonishing offer by Quan Hornelius Quandelius III removed, Jacob and Devin Reese continue to research and take pictures of the five points of slums. While doing so, they happen to stumble into an immigrant dance party as Lil Redis and Lil Dishy rapped over the mic. Yeah. Lil Redis on the track. Lil Dishy. Yes, sir. Hey. Hey. Yeah. 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 Came to America, so I heard there was some gold. I wanted to be rich, now I'm working in the cold. I wanted to be rich, now I'm doing what I'm told. I'm sleeping in a tenement that's covered in some mold. If you got no money, then your room is getting sold. I left my family, yet everybody get enrolled. They kick us from our jobs, feel like we getting trolled. Working in this factory, I'm feeling hella old. Make it so little, they want us all controlled. 
300 square feet, a person household. Raising up the prices, I mean they did us all so cold. Our children done dirty, yeah. They can't get them rolled. Pulled up cause I thought I'd have a chance in this new nation. But now I find myself building up a brand new station. Making so little, got no money for a vacation. Trench I so hard, gotta struggle through starvation. Is life always like this? And for what duration? Told us there were towers, so I ran to the closest station. But I didn't know we'd be the ones building the foundation. I just wanted gold, wanted a new sensation. Nativist everywhere, I feel like I'm on probation. No hablo English, yo quiero un translation. If life ain't getting better, it might find a new location. Farmers going crazy while they talking about inflation. Conditions so poor, yeah, I'm fuming in frustration. Streets so congested, can't move up and down the block. Stuck in an alley, so I'm just gonna rock.